Hello, this is Yarik, and today I'm going to show you how to set up SMB shares on FreeNAS for access from Windows 10. Now you might say, what, another one? There's going to be plenty of videos with that. This is absolutely true. This is yet another one. Only because I looked at what's out there, I don't quite agree with all the choices made, the different ways to configure it. This is my way and uh, hopefully it's useful. So let's get started. Um, we're going to have a specific use case in mind. It's going to be a home environment um, with, I'm um, checking my notes, uh, with Plex Media Server in it. So we may have to make sure that Plex can read and write to the media share as well. And we're going to have, uh, in, in this, we're going to use two sample users and one sample group. The users will be tied to Windows 10 users that already exist in the Windows environment. Uh, you could use multiple groups if that's something in your environment. If, say, you know you have children and you, you want them in a group that doesn't have access to everything, users can belong to different groups. Uh, there's going to be some um, advanced links in the description as to you know how to do advanced uh, ACLs access control lists in uh, FreeNAS that's going to be beyond this video and I'm going to have a little bit um, about troubleshooting in the description as well. So I'm actually going to start with a group so if I wanted to create one here say I call this home share and I give it a group ID, right? This is not what I have in my environment, but uh, that's good enough. Um, I actually use shared. So for this test here, I'm going to do home share and I'll rip the, all of this out again later. Now I'll go into users. And uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to add a user that also exists in Windows 10 and I'm going to map it to the Microsoft account. And I'm going to add a backup user uh, for use with Veeam. Okay, so let's say this is example user. And uh, the username here actually need not match the one on Windows. You can do that. You can have it match if that makes it easier, but it doesn't have to. Um, this email address, that's going to be the email address that is used within the Microsoft account in Windows. The password has to match what you are using in Windows. And we're going to say this is a Microsoft account. And then lastly, we're not going to do a new primary group we're going to make this a user that's part of the home share group, right? This is important because we're going to uh, control access to things through the group. All right. I'm not going to deal with uh, home directories here. And we're just going to say save. Now you might not actually have Microsoft accounts or so not use Windows 10, in which case I'm going to show you what this looks like if you don't use that um, or if you need a service account. In this case, I already created one called Backup. It's got the Backup account. Username is Backup. It doesn't have an email. A password is set for it. It is also part of my primary group. In this case, the group Shared because that's what I'm actually really using. And then you see here, it's not a Microsoft account. So if I use this user to access my shares, I'd have to um, log in as that user, Windows will prompt me, say you don't have access, put in your username and password. And then I can tell Windows to remember that. Or conversely, if I have this Microsoft account mapping, what happens under the hood is that Samba will create a mapping file from the email address to the username. And then as long as the password uh, matches, it'll log me in without the need to you know, create that manually in Windows or type it in and then tell it, remember it. The reason to have a backup user here instead of using the individual users for my just for my backups that I'm doing through Veeam is that if a user changes their password, um, 
that doesn't impact the backups, right? The backups will just keep running. Uh, that, that's very useful. If a user does change the password, it also needs to be changed in here. So if uh, on my Windows machine, for whatever reason I change my password, I need to go in here and change it here as well so that the automatic access works. Now for the following, I'm actually gonna use my real users just for ease of demonstration. So I'm gonna use my group shared instead of home share. I'm gonna use my users here, Torsten, right? Um, because that's already set up and it's working. I created the example user and the home share group to show you how that works. Right after this lengthy introduction to users and groups, and I promise this is getting somewhere, um, we're now going to create ourselves a data set. The data set is the unit that holds your data. So if you have, say, Plex Media, that would go into a Plex data set, Plex Media data set. If you have backup, that would go into a backup data set. If you have some shared um, storage, that would go into shared, right? And you do not want these to just be directories under the main um main pool. And there's reasons for that. This has to do with what we can do with snapshots and seeing versions of files and what we can do with access control. So if you have different ways of accessing things or different users need access, it's useful to have a data set. So let's go add a data set. Um, I'm going to pretend this is my Plex Media set. So I'm going to call it Plex Media. This is, would be then mounted into the Plex jail. And the one thing I want to do here is I want to set my share type for, to SMB. I'm going to do that for everything I create. And the reason is that this makes case sensitivity insensitive. That's what I want. If I have case sensitivity with Windows shares, it actually slows file browsing down quite a lot. Samba under the hood has to um, map each file twice if it's case sensitive. So it might be you know, uh, backwards from how this works when you're not accessing from Windows. But given that I'm accessing from a Windows system, definitely set the share type to SMB. Now that I have my data set, I need to enable the SMB service. This is the service that will allow me to share data with Windows machines. So I'm gonna go here and configure this. Um, NetBIOS name, give it a name. I call case it's called FreeNAS. Workgroup can stay workgroup. This is the default for Windows machines. A description, do not enable SMB1 support. We're not going to use that here. Um, do not give it local master. We're not going to use that. Guest account can be nobody. But again, we're not going to use guest accounts. Um, zero conf share discovery is something you can turn on. This is the Apple Bonjour protocol. If you have iTunes installed, um, FreeNAS might be uh, discoverable through this, but what we're really going to do is we're going to put this auxiliary parameter in, enable web service discovery equals yes. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later um, as to what that does, but basically this will allow FreeNAS to show up in my network neighborhood. And just save that. Okay, and now I want to start the SMB service and set it to start automatically. Perfect. Next I need to create a share. And it's going to be a Windows share, SMB. I'm just going to add, and I need to specify the path. So it's going to be this new Plex Media that I created. Um, we're going to enable shadow copies. Uh, Time Machine is an Apple uh, function. I am not using Apple machines in my environment, so I'm not enabling this. And I'm definitely not allowing guest access. So let me talk to that briefly. Windows 10 and newer versions does not actually do guest access to shares anymore. So I'm just not gonna fiddle with it. I'm gonna stick with the default behavior of Windows and always have a mapped user instead of going through guest. Ultimately, that's actually easier um, than saying, well, if I just do guest, right? Uh, it's easier to just create the users here rather than going into each Windows machine and making sure guest access works. Okay, there it is. And now I'm going to take a look at the ACLs. So edit ACL. Now I have to make a couple changes here, right? Um, the user here is not going to be root. That's going to be nobody. 
can find it. There it is. My group isn't going to be wheel. This is going to be the group that I created earlier that holds my users that are mapped to Windows users. So in my case, shared. Home share was the example. It's actually the shared group. And then you see here, my um, owner has full control and my group has full control. So that's great. That already works. The only thing I need to do is because this is Plex Media, Plex actually needs full control access to this um, in order to optimize videos. If I only want Plex to read, I could give it read access, but I, if, if I want Plex to be able to optimize videos, which means it creates a second copy of it, say in um, cell phone uh, resolution, then uh, I need, an, I need uh, full control. So either way, I need to allow Plex to get to this. So I'm going to add an ACL item. I'm going to say who, it's going to be a user. And now I don't actually have the Plex user created. So I'm just going to use the ID. Um, the Plex user happens to be user ID 972. It always is. And the permissions are full control. That's it. And now save this. And this really is it. So a moment of truth, see whether we can get there. Under my network, I have FreeNAS. There's Plex Media, I just created this. And now Plex wants folders under this. So I'm going to say movies. And that worked, right? Now would create TV shows and music underneath here as well. But clearly I have full access. And this is as the Windows user that I am logged in as. So this maps back to the Torsten user. This is not as um, Plex. Plex would do that through its own uh, user within FreeNAS. I'm going to do one more just because to show you what this looks like without the Plex stuff. Probably already figured that out. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to create myself another data set. And let's say that's my family share. If I can type. And again, the only thing I need to pay attention to here is that the share type is SMB, not generic, and case sensitivity is insensitive. Save this. And now again, I'm going to create a share, Windows share, for the uh, family share data set I just created. That's great. Enable shadow copies. I want that. I'll talk about that in just one second, actually. Save. I'll talk about one quirk here. If I don't restart the SMB service, this new share will actually not be visible. So you see here, doing F5, nothing, right? Go away, come back, nothing, no share. Now let's uh, restart the service, the SMB service, which I can do right from the GUI, just stop it, restart it, and here's my family share. Now I haven't created an ACL yet, or rather it has the default ACL, which means it belongs to user root and group wheel. So if I now get to family share, it tells me I don't have permission. That's absolutely true, I don't, right? So let's go into here to the shares and say I wanna edit the ACL. All I'm gonna do is, again, I'm gonna change the user to nobody um, and the group to shared. Really the group is the important part here. The user, I'm just cleaning up things if you so will. And I'm going to save this. There's nothing in this share, which is why I did not apply permissions recursively. If there were actually data sets under this or there were files in there, then what I would have had to do, let me show you that again, is here to say apply permissions recursively. Right? So it applies to everything in it. Okay, now when I access family share, aha, I can get in here and can I create something in it? Uh, our finances are going to live in this folder. Yes, yes I can. Okay, that worked. Now let me talk about shadow copies and about the recycle bin. Shadow copies are a way to see previous versions. So we had that enabled on all these um, things. And as long as I have snapshots going, which I happen to have, and that's set up under tasks, 
and periodic snapshot. So I have periodic snapshots for all my stuff, right? And they typically hang around for about two weeks after they after that they get deleted. Um, so if I now go into say shared and here's a driver directory I have and I want to see whether I have previous versions of that. I can go to previous versions and it'll show me earlier versions of this that I can open or restore here from Windows. That's a really nice feature where with the snapshots and the shadow copy support I get previous versions which makes it really really easy to get back to something if I um, deleted something I didn't mean to delete. Now there also is a recycle bin but it doesn't integrate with the Windows recycle bin up here it would have to be manually deleted and if you forget that you're going to run out of space in your data set. So my recommendation is to not enable that. If you absolutely positively must have it there would be a dot recycle directory here under that would be users and then all your files and it does not automatically delete. There are scripts online that will empty it for things that are older than say two weeks or something like that. You can play with that. Personally shadow copies and a backup do me just fine. I have no need uh, to use the recycle function and I recommend against using it. I'm going to show you where that is though. So if you already have recycle on on some things you might want to turn it off again if it's starting to eat your data or rather your, your, your storage space. right? And that's on the share itself Go into the share, go into advanced mode, see here export recycle bin. That's the Samba recycle bin. Again, does not integrate with Windows and has its own behavior. Uh, probably not desirable. Okay. Lastly, you saw me browsing to this free NAS thing as if that was nothing, right? And I know that this is a big pain point for a lot of people that like, you can't get this to work. It doesn't show up in network neighborhood. I always have to put in the IP address. So there are two pieces to that. The first piece I already showed you, I'm just going to show you again. That's this enable web service discovery equals yes. And that's from 11.3 and 12. And then the second part is this resource here. Within Windows, you're going to kill off SMB1, Samba one, uh, SMB version 1. And you're going to make sure that WSD service is on. You're going to switch off Wins if you have that running. Any Wins settings should be gone. And then you just reboot Windows. And that's it. So basically you have a clean SMB v2, v3 setup, not using Wins, using WSD, which is how uh, Microsoft recommends you configure things at this point anyway. Okay, I think that's it. I can't think of anything more. Thank you for watching.